Hi everyone and welcome to this uh, beautiful video training on the invitation. It is truthfully the one skill, if there is one, that you absolutely need to master and become an expert. I'll explain you why it is very easy. In our business, we got to get customers and we got to get business partners, right? But it's only through the invitation that you'll be able to expose these people to what it is that we do and go get these business partners and clients, right? So, but before we get into the nitty and the gritty, before we get into the approach and and really the the to practice it so you can see exactly what it is, we got to talk about the big elephant in the room and it is the mindset. For real, it doesn't matter your invitation and how many you do if you don't have the right mindset. Truthfully, your invitations are not going to have a high success rate. So the goal is that you understand the approach and that you get yourself in the right mindset and that you practice it as much as possible so you're really, really comfortable. And the more you do this, the better your success rate at your invitations and better your invitations are, better your business will grow, right? So let's get into it. And first, we need to talk about your why. Your why, it's literally the fuel to your business. Your why is the reason why you're going to actually take actions. You're going to get out of your comfort zone. You're going to actually you know what, this waitress, she was really cool, but I'm too afraid to ask her or, you know, but if you have a why that is deep enough, no matter what it is, maybe it's your children, maybe it's to get out of debt, maybe, and you're going to see your why is going to evolve, evolve throughout the years. Uh, obviously, when I got started, um, my why was just to not get evicted of my apartment. It is this sad, but of course it did evolve with time. My why now is basically my, my ambition. Cause I saw, I saw my brother, my brother's a doctor, his wife's a doctor. They seem really successful. And I was like, they literally have no time for so long. I felt like they had such a better life than me and blah, blah, blah. And when I got this business started, I realized that I wanted to get it started as well because I saw myself as I wanted to have the choice to be a stay-at-home home, home mom, right? Or uh, a retired parent, right? So what are your parents doing? Oh, I don't know. They're retired, but it's a kid. It's fantastic. Uh, I realized that my brother didn't really have times with his kids and... I thought to myself, you know what? I'm not going to be able to do better as him if I'm an employee. So that was my why. And so you want to dig deep. You want to make sure that your why is deep enough. This is the number one, right? It's the one that's going to make you take the actions. Now, you also have to understand that mindset and create that shift. The goal here is not to recruit people. It is not to convince people people you got to take this out of your mind absolutely and make sure that you position yourself into a mindset of sharing and i'll explain to you why the share aspect is so important when you're in the feeling the mindset of a recruiter you need to have ideas to get in your business so you can have your promotion and nah, 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 nah. you're in the need you're in that mindset. You will unconsciously sound desperate. So you really want to be in the mindset of sharing to detach yourself from the result. You should always focus on, did I do a good job at sharing? And did I, did I do what I was supposed to do? Did I get out of my comfort zone and approach somebody I was afraid to approach or else, right? And if you focus on the fact that, hey, you know what? No matter what is the result, my goal was just to make sure that I did share the information. 
So if you focus on that and to share it to as much possible people, then your business will grow because the person will not feel like you're desperate. The person will feel like, you know what? It doesn't matter what you do. It takes the pressure off them. It takes the pressure off you. So always stay in that mindset. It's really, really important. Now, your posture. Uh, I remember having someone giving me the advice of wearing high heels if you're a lady <laughs> or some type of other gender that wear high heels if that suits you, all good to you. Uh, but wear high heels, wear something that makes you feel good. Uh, look at yourself in the mirror. Smile. Don't forget to smile. Um, stand up. Sitting is more passive. So stand up, be straight, put your shoulders back. All kinds of stuff that physiologically will make you feel better and more confident. Then that's the physical part of it. But then the mental part of the posture. You got to understand that this business is worth millions. I'll get back to the example of my brother. I felt so inferior uh, compared to him for the longest time. And I was like, oh my God, you know, he has it so good, blah, blah, blah. But then I realized that his time broke. Even if he has money, he's so time broke. And he's such a slave of the hospitals he work at that he has to ask one year in advance for vacations. And they're forced, both of them, to at least work either Christmas Eve or Christmas, either New Year's Eve or New Year's. Like, they, they, you would think, but no, it's not because they make a lot of money that they have it better. My nephews were brought up and they had nannies to take care of the kids because they didn't have enough time. So when I started to look at how great our opportunity is and even though in my opinion at first he had more success I realized that when I'll have kids my lifestyle would be well I don't want to say better but uh, I want to say my lifestyle will allow me so much more so it doesn't matter how much they make. It doesn't matter what they do. You have something so precious compared to anybody that allows you to have freedom and choices and money combined, all those good stuff on top of contributing to the success of people. So stand your ground in that posture that what it is that you have to offer is better than anything else that they've ever seen. So that at this point, no matter what they say or what they do, it doesn't matter. You'll get there anyway. So if they don't want to come in the train, they don't. So keep that posture and be conscious of your opportunity and how great it is. Now, mastering. So that's a great subject. I love that part because I see that a lot when people get started with us, especially professionals. If they're already succeeding at any kind of field that they're in. Like, let's say, for example, I love to give that example. I used to work with someone that was um, in the market field of engineering. So extremely brilliant person. He mastered what he was doing. And because he was an engineer, he thought, well, you know what? I got this. Or uh, a senior sales person. They think that they've got it all figured out. But the problem is they forgot that when they come here in ACN, they're babies. And they're going to stumble. They're going to talk too much. And then they're going to realize that, oh, boy. How did I get from, I was supposed to invite, invite somebody, invite somebody, um, and then it ended up me doing the whole presentation over the phone and the person looks like they don't want to come to the Zoom. So 
uh, you don't want to be that person. So you're going to have to accept that, first of all, you're going to suck. And first of all, you're also going to be really, really, really nervous. But get this, the more you practice, the more you're going to feel confident. And the more confident you feel, the more when you talk to the person, you'll be so natural and confident. They're just going to be like, oh my God, this is great. This is fantastic. If you call them and you're like, I, uh, I wanted, uh, uh, you know, it, the person will be like, mm, I don't know. Do I really want to work with this person? Think about that, right? So put yourself in the mindset of Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, every time he shots or was shooting, right? He did it so much, so much, like a thousand times. That at some point he could have done it, eyes closed, turning back, backwards. He became confident that he's got it because he practiced it so much. Practice makes perfect. So practice people. Until you've practiced at least a hundred times. My mentor, Jonathan Diesel, told me, you know what? Before you start inviting. You're going to practice a hundred times in front of your mirror while smiling. And then when you feel you're ready, you're going to send me an audio message. And then I'll listen to it. And then if I have some key pointers to give you, I'll do it. Obviously, <laughs> it was not super good, but it was not that terrible because I did practice. And then he gave me a few key pointers. And then I really started to get it. And I really started to become good. And I really started to feel confident, which fired up my motivation and my why to take action. So it's kind of like a, a beautiful, visual, vicious, positive circle, right? And the more you get the results, the more you're going to want to take more actions. And then you're going to want to continue to practice and continue. And it's going to fuel up your confidence that's going to fuel up your action. That's going to fill up your results, right? All right. And I want you to realize that the distance between success and failures, there was a research done for that, is literally 30 centimeters. Can you imagine how tiny is this? It's really, really tiny. So I want you to keep that in mind that there's a tiny line between it, but you know what? You just got to give it your all. Give it your all. Practice until you're like, yeah, I got this. Blast some music. Pump you up. Let's go. Energize yourself. Be so confident and happy and excited. I remember... Uh, I think it was the first year that we got the cell phone with TELUS. I remember the first Black Friday promotion that we had. And I was super excited because they just announced we were getting bonuses. And, and I thought to myself, okay, I want to get this much customers and this amount of points. And I just want to send out a lot of voice messages on Messenger in and see if I can get customers. Well, guess what happened? I started to jump on my mini trampoline and then I had the music blasted and then I started to send voice message. Oh my God, you won't imagine that promotion that we have. Who's your cell phone providers? You're gonna freak out. The deal is insane. That's all I sent. Well, out of the 40 messages that I got, guess what? Not everybody responded, but I acquired uh, 11 customers out of this. This is fantastic. So it's the same kind of mindset that you want to do when you're going to do your invitation. All right. Now, let's get to it. It's not to get customers, those invitations. It's obviously to expose people to the business. Because once they know the business, then they'll make the choice, well, do I want to be a business partner or do I just want to be a customer, right? Or, you know, 
it's not for everybody. So keep that in mind that not everybody's going to say yes. Some people are going to be very skeptical and very negative. You don't want to work with these people. Your goal is not to convince them. Your goal is not to transform them in somebody that is suddenly positive. It's not going to happen. Your goal is to sort the negative people. You put them away. Never talk to them ever again. Just say, oh, you know what? Might be a bad timing. I'm so sorry. I'll call you back another time. Hang up. It doesn't matter. You're going to realize there's 80% of the population that has questions. And it's normal. It's okay. People will have questions. And a very small amount of people that, you know what, I call them the red apples because they're just they're just always happy. They smile. They're super optimistic. You call them, hi, hello. Oh, I have a favor to ask you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No problem. They just say yes. They don't ask questions. Those guys, you want to keep them close. You love them. But, you know, you're going to see some people will have questions and it is okay. And we'll show you how to handle those questions, right? So first of all, you got to understand there's a few different type of markets. There's the hot market, there's the, the lukewarm market, and then there's the cold market. So first of all, we're going to get started with the hot market. These people are literally everybody that you know. Everybody you know. Family friends, colleagues, right? So these people are the ones that we're going to invite to your PBZ private. So a private Zoom, private business Zoom, that will happen where all these people that you know will be invited. When you get started with ACN, we're going to ask you to plan at least two to get started in your first week, right? Or as much as you want, right? Because the thing is, it's a numbers game, right? And if I tell you that 10% of the people that see the information will actually get started, in order to be calling this a percent, you need to at least have 100 people looking at the information. But the truth is, out of those hundreds of people, 10 get started. You agree with me that the 90 other people, there will be customers, tons of customers in there, right? If you do that as fast as possible, trust me, your business will explode. Okay, so let's get back to the hot market. So your Zooms. We're going to have someone, an expert, that's going to present to the information. Don't worry. That's going to present the information for you. You're lucky. You don't have to do that groundwork to begin with. Your only task is to invite people. So you're going to invite the people. If you start to talk about what it is, this business, what are the services, how much it costs to get started, how much are you paid, you've talked too much. Why would the person would show up to the Zoom if you already have given them the information and it's not your role. Not that we don't trust you that you can actually give out these information, but we know by experience that if you don't keep a little bit of curiosity, it's kind of like flirting with someone. You don't want to say like, hey, do you want to go on a date? By the way, my name is this, blah, 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 and then tell them all your life, right? Let's keep a little bit of curiosity. And the reality is, Human beings are extremely curious. The goal is not no, neither to be super secretive, but you want to invite them. And you got to get yourself in the mindset that, hey, you know what? If you were to open a restaurant, you would choose a date for your grand opening and you would invite everybody. You would not let everybody choose a date that suits them for you to open your restaurant. Absolutely not. You're picking the date. This is the date I open my restaurant and I'll invite the people. Then we'll come whoever can, right? Keep that in the, in the mind. So let's get to it. I'll give you an example. Luke is my friend. 
Hi, Luke. How are you? Take some news. Oh, it's Virginia. How are you? I know it's been a while. How are the kids? You know, important, obviously. Then just continue with this. Listen, I'm a bit busy, but I really had to talk to you. I have a major announcement. I just started in business. I'm so excited. And the big opening will be online because it's I'm getting started online. Here's the date. Here's the time. And I really insist that everyone that I love are there. I only need about 40 minutes of your time. And it really would mean the world to me. Do you think I can count on you? And then you give them the Zoom link. So, of course, again, some people will have questions. But you know what? If it's your hot market and it's your best friend and you call them. And, you know, this is just to give you an idea. Take a screenshot of that. Write it down. Put it to your words. So that when you say it, it actually feels really comfortable. You're really at ease and it's your words because if you call someone and you're like, hi, Luke, how are you? Listen, uh, I'm busy. I absolutely had to talk to you. I have a major announcement. Don't read the text. People will think, oh my God, what's going on with her? Is she gone cuckoo or what? She's going to think you gone, you gone crazy, right? The goal is to put it in your words. Make sure you're super comfortable with it. Make sure you repeat. Because the more natural it sounds, the better success you'll get. You have to make sure you sound extremely natural, very, very confident. And it just gets out just like that. Hey, you know what? Major big deal. I'm just getting started in business. I'm so excited. I really want to show you exactly what it is. I'll do it online. It's this time, this hour. And I really want you there. Can I count on you? It would really mean the, the world to me. So did you see what I did there? I moved a little bit. I repeated it. And then I felt, you know what? I like this order a little bit better. All right. So let's get to work. Take your pens and paper. Write it down. Practice it, mold it to your words. And there you go. There goes your first Zooms. Really, really important. Now, let's move on to, okay, this is the PBZ, the team PBZ. So what I mean by team, and again, it's for your hot market. Um, the team PBZ are the, the, the Zooms that are organized by the whole Infinity Momentum group team. So if you, you've been with us for a while now and you know what, you just have like a one person here that, you know, last minute, they want to connect and you don't have anybody to present for you or even I, I still use those Zooms. After seven years, I still use those Zooms because... I, I like the idea that there's a third party situation, this triangle. So they know me, but some of them, they don't me, they don't know me for me. Some of them might have not known what I do and they know that I was a hairstylist. So I like to have someone else that present or maybe uh, Matthew is doing the presentation and he's a swim coach. Maybe I met someone that is in that industry and I want the person to relate to this specific um, pre presenter. So that's why I would be more inclined to invite someone specific to see the presentation of one of the speakers that we have available. So here's how the invitation would go. Hey, Julie, how are you? Do you have two minutes? Oh, yeah. Okay, perfect. All right. Hey, by the way, I really want to know what's going on with you. It's been a while. What's up? How's your husband? How are your kids? Oh, fantastic. Okay. Hey, listen, I really don't want to take too much time of uh, uh too much of your time, but I have a very big question for you. Do you have 
30 minutes for me next Monday or Wednesday night. What would be best for you? Oh, yeah, Wednesday. Okay, excellent. Well, you know what? There's this uh, group of entrepreneurs that are on the expansion of a huge, huge project right now. And it's about identity theft protection. Like, you know, the story about Capital One and Equifax, remember? When it all got breached and everybody's information got exposed, you probably someone that got impacted by that, right? Yeah. Okay. So anyway, but it seems such a big opportunity that I think it could be good for us, but I would really like for us to take a look together. I just, I trust your judgment. And with the two of us, I think we can figure it out. Are you in? If you don't like the word identity theft protection, you can use energy or, you know, it's just that this one is so good. I'll explain why. Again, everybody knows someone that got hacked by either Capital One on Equifax or name it Desjardins in Quebec, if you know Desjardins. <laughs> um, but we all know. And, you know, even the Canada government. They breached us, a bunch of us, yeah. So it's just so that they can relate, you know, because everyone will be like, oh, yeah, I remember when that happened. It was so big. It was so huge. Uh, so they feel more comfortable again, right? So people will do business with people that they like, know, and trust. So obviously saying this also says nothing. I didn't need theft protection. It's a beautiful term. It will prevent them to be asking, yeah, what's the name of the company? Oh, yeah, what's, what is that about? It just, it disables all, all those questions by saying this. Um, so yeah, basically. But if you do get those kinds of questions, here's what I would say. Well, you know what? You said that you were, and the reason why we ask, are you available for 30 minutes next Monday night or Wednesday night? They already said yes. They can't go back to what they just said and say, oh, you know what? No, I'm not available. It will look weird. Uh, but yeah, but no, they might ask, well, what's the name of the company? Infinity Momentum. If they search this on the web or flash. If they search that on the web, they won't find it. But at least you gave them an answer, right? The goal is not to get away with that answer, but then repeat. Well, you know what? You told me that you were available and it, it's really important for me. I really, really trust your judgment. And with the two of us, I know that we can figure it out. I think it would be good for us. Again, it takes out the, the guarantee and it, it doesn't feel like you're trying to convince them to anything. I think it could be good for us. But you know what? With the two of us, pretty sure we can figure it out. So it really takes out the pressure. You're kind of asking for a favor. So most likely, if they're available, they will come, right? Are you in? Oh, you told me you were free. And you know what? Again, I really trust your judgment. I... I just saw the information. I can't really <laughs> go through it all. Like I'm not an expert. I can't explain it all. Take take the the fact that you're if you're brand new, take the fact that you're brand new. Use it. Use it. You know what? I would love to explain anything, but it's it's such it's such an industry that I'm not familiar and I really trust your judgment. Can I count on you to be there Monday morning Monday night, 30 minutes, Monday night? Yeah? Awesome. Okay, I'm going to send you the Zoom link. I'll see you Monday. There you go. All right, so that was for the Hot Market, the PBZ team. Now, the lukewarm market. The lukewarm market is actually people that are more like acquaintance, like Facebook friends. You've never seen each other, but you know, you kind of know them from far or it's the brother of your best friend or, or, you know, it's someone that you know, but don't know so much. So lukewarm market. 
Uh, let's say you're on Facebook for this example. Hey, Annie, it's Virginia. <laughs> My French accent just got out. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, Annie, it's Virginia. How are you? Laugh, take some news. Hey, listen, you're probably wondering why I'm calling you. Oh my God, eh? Okay, well, here, I'm calling you because it's been a week. And for some weird reason, I just can't keep your your name out of my head. It's been so long. But you know what? I just, I can't keep thinking about you. I'll explain why. I met a big group of entrepreneurs and they're working on the expansion of this huge project and it's on identity theft protection. Like, remember what happened with Capital One and Equifax? Yeah, you probably know people that got impacted, right? Yeah, me too. Oh my God, it was so huge. Um, so it seems like a huge opportunity and it could be good for us. Not sure, but you know what? You're always someone I look up to you're ambitious, you're wise, and I would like for us to take a look together. I really trust your judgment, and with the two of us, I think we can really figure this out. Are you in? Again, same deal with the questions and whatever, and if you feel too much resistance, I want to reiterate this. If you feel a lot of resistance, you know what? I might have catch you in a bad time. I'm really sorry. I hope you have a good night and thank you for, for picking up. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Sometimes even just doing that, people will be like, oh, she actually hung up? Like, what the hell? <laughs> they might even call you back. Hey, uh, what's going on? Hold on a sec. I didn't say I didn't want to come, right? But it's going to give them a little surprise. Right. So that's your lukewarm market. The people that you know but don't, don't really know, people on Facebook, uh, this is a way to do this. You could also, you know what? I love to do this. I send audio messages on Facebook to people that are my friends on Facebook. But sometimes I forget when and how I added them. So it goes like this. Hey, uh, Luke, how are you? Oh my God, I hope you're doing well. I was just scrolling down my, my Facebook friends list and I can't really remember where are we connected from or like how did we become friends? Anyways, um, I was just looking through your profile trying to remember. I'm so sorry if I forgot about you, but please enlighten me. Uh, but I saw your profile and you know what? I thought you were really, really dynamic. I really liked it. And I just thought to myself, why not ask you? I've seen this huge uh, group of entrepreneurs. They've been working on that project. I think it will be fantastic. I don't know. It's on identity theft protection. Like what happened to Capital One and, and Equifax. You probably know people that got impacted. Yeah, right. So I, I, I don't know much about this, but I know it could be a huge opportunity I don't know if it could be a good fit for you. Maybe yes, maybe no. But are you open to make some income outside of what you're doing right now? Well, you know what? Why don't you just come? We have a Zoom meetings. I would love to give you more details, but you know what? I'm just brand new, just got saw the information and I think you would probably be a good fit, but let's figure this out. So are you available next Monday or next? Wednesday night, send the video link, the Zoom link, sorry. Now, cold market. The cold market, it's mostly on social media or at the restaurant, at the store, at the grocery store, or anywhere you'll meet a total stranger, basically. And the goal is to actually warm them up a little bit. So they're not so strangers. And then you practice the lukewarm approach with them. So uh, the cold market, again, if you're going on social media, first of all, you want to be sure that, one, you have zero expectations because they don't know you. Again, people will do business with people that they like, know, and trust, right? 
So don't put too much expectation on this. And you have to have absolutely no emotions. The goal is just to go through the numbers because you know what? In the numbers, the statistic will get confirmed. The percentage will get confirmed. So you just want to go through the numbers. And it's a numbers game, basically. Some will, some what, some won't. So what? Just go to the next. And the great thing of it is you have an unlimited volume and you actually get to choose who you want to work with because, well, let's say you've got people that are suggested, right? So in your suggestion on social media, you want to go and scroll a little bit at their profile. If they have no Facebook profile picture or they have a picture of, I don't know, a cat, it doesn't tell you a lot about that person, but just scroll down the profile. Try to see if this person is on social media and they're extremely negative, posting stuff, complaining all the time. It's a good sign. It's a negative person. You might not want to add them, right? But if you see that this person has a dynamic Facebook profile, a nice picture, they look vibrant, they might look like they're in business or they have a beautiful mindset. They post quotes that are very interesting or they have uh, interests that are common to you. This is a good sign you want to add those people, right? So you screen the profile, you add people every single day and you go look at who accepts you. Like a comment, comment a few picture, open discussions. Hey, Patrick, thanks for accepting my request. I really like your profile. Have you been biking for a long time? Hmm, what an industry are you working in? What industry are you working in? I work in this industry. What are you doing? Just have conversation. Your goal is to make friends. And then you're going to sort quickly. Again, think of my... my um, sorting system I was explaining to you the red apples people that the conversation just go flow slowly naturally those are great people with great attitude you want to keep talking to them some people will answer it might take a little more time just you know think of it as a gardener right you're not like there and hunting and trying to catch a prey that's not the goal <laughs> you're a gardener you're maintaining relation, you're building relationship. It will take more time and effort, that's for sure, uh, to build those relationships, for sure. But as you see that the conversation goes, you're going to see that some people are open and some people are closed. Either they won't answer you or they're going to be like, hi, do we know each other? You know they're closed, right? So just maintain with the ones that are really open. Now, after a few conversation, follow the lukewarm approach. So you go back here. Hey, Annie, I've been following you for a while. How are you? I realize we've never talked. Uh, I just thought, you know what? It would be great to connect. What are you doing? What kind of field of industry are you working in? I would love to get to know you a bit better. I just saw your profile. I thought you just seemed like a great person. You have such a nice attitude and, and just a nice vibe. And you know what? As I was scrolling down your profile, I just saw she looks very dynamic. She could be a good fit to what it is that I'm doing. And I just wanted to open, I just wanted to ask you, are you the kind of person that keeps their option open? If that's the case, well, I would love for you to, take a look at what it is that we do. And if that's not a good fit, perfect. If it is, great. No problem. No pressure there. I just had a, a sense, uh, a little instinct. I need to talk to her. So would you be available 30 minutes next week? How about Monday or Wednesday? Which one's best? I really love sometimes to offer two time slots just because their mindset goes to wonder, hmm, is it better Monday or Wednesday? Instead of asking, do I want to go or not? They're thinking Monday, Wednesday. Uh, yeah, well, you know what? Yeah, Monday could work. 
There you go. But again, zero expectations, zero emotion. Because they're a colder market, uh, you know, those are the hardest one to get because they don't really know you. So you can't have expectations on these kind of people. And I understand that with the hot market, because it's your family and friends, it might pinch a little more if someone tells you no, right? Compared to the cold market. But you know what? In my experience, I realized that the most negative people around me were my friends and my family. And I had to learn to detach myself from this. It didn't matter. And I told myself, you know what? No matter what they say or do, I will succeed in this business. No matter what they say or do, it doesn't matter. And three years later, fast forward, when COVID hit, guess what my mom said to me? She said, oh, are you okay? What's going on? La, la, la. And I'm like, mom, I'm okay. Guess what? I'm lucky enough. I'm in a business where everybody has to pay for their electric bills, for their cell phone bills, for the internet. No matter how the world closed up and went down, they're still paying for their bills and I'm still making money every single month. She's like, oh, wow. This is a good opportunity, eh? Thank goodness you get start. You got started three years ago. I said, you know what, mom? You were the most negative person when I got started. And I'm so proud I didn't listen to you because I wouldn't be here today. And I would probably be worried about myself if I, because I was working in the restaurant industry and what happened to the restaurant for a few months? They closed up. A lot of people bankrupt. It was crazy. A lot of restaurants closed forever. So I'm going back to the posture of what it is that we got to offer. You got to realize this is insane. When the world went down, we were booming. And I, I built up that posture. And I finally said it to my mom. You know what? It really hurted me when you said that. It hurt me. Because it's my mom, I want her to support me. But she wasn't that person. But you know what? It sure felt good when I told her, you know what? I'm happy you're saying this. And I'm happy I didn't listen to you. It was the best decision I could have ever made of my entire life. All right, people. Uh, I hope that this training has helped you, has fired you, and has really gave you the tools uh, to, to really propel you and go do it. Again, it's a numbers game. To become a regional coordinator, you're going to have to talk to people. You can't get there by coincidence, right? So if your goal is to get there, get a few extra hundred dollars, or, or get huge goals. It doesn't matter. You got to go through the numbers. And you never know when your next RVP is going to cross your side. I want to finish with this. Because uh, we talked about the invitation, but really, without your list of 100 names and you getting yourself out there and starting to invite Nothing will get started, right? I just remember being so afraid at the beginning to contact people and doing invitations. And my mentor said, okay, enough. It's time for you to get started. Open your phone and pick the first one that is there and we're, we're going to call it. And I'm like, oh, no. I don't know. I was scrolling my phone. No, I can't. No, not this person. Oh. And I was prejudging people. Today, the first regional vice president that got promoted in my team is the first ever IBO that I introduced to the business. The first one that got started in my team became our VP. 
This person I've met in an Uber. He was an Uber driver. He was extremely busy. We just got started when we said we were going out for dinner, me and a few friends. And he was just asking questions. I was asking questions. Do you do this full time? Uber was brand new by by then. Um, and he's like, yeah, well, you know what? I'm studying to become a nurse and I'm working at the hospital. And uh, as well, I, I do Uber in the cracks of my schedule. So I'm like, wow, where do you find the time to eat and sleep? He's like, yeah, that's kind of like the problem. I'm like, well, uh, what if I had something that could help you save time at some point and also make money and create more time in your schedule? He became very curious. This is an approach. The guy is a cold market. He's an Uber. That's all I said. I realized, oh my God, the guy has no time. What if I could find a way for you to create more time and make money at the same time? Are you, are you open to anything outside of what you're doing? He said, of course, absolutely. Okay, give me your number. I'll call you next week. So I called him on the Monday. And on the Monday, it was two o'clock in the afternoon on the Monday. And he said, well, you know what? I'm actually at university. Uh, can I come after? Back then, we were meeting in an office. Can I can I come after my 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 course at the university? And I said, Yeah, of course. We'll meet eight thirty. Perfect. He saw the information. He got started, and this person became the first ever RVP in my organization. Had I prejudged this person? Had I not asked him the question, him and his entire organization would not be here today. It's literally hundreds of lives that got impacted because of that one little question I asked him. Simple. I know you're really busy. Wouldn't you wish you had more time? What if there was a way for you to combine time and money and create more time in the crazy schedule that you have? So I want to leave you on this. Make it simple. Ask a lot of questions. Be interested in the person that you're meeting. And then just say, ask the question. Are you open to anything outside of what you're doing in these time of days in 2024? I'm telling you guys, a lot of people are looking for an opportunity and they're actually right now praying. You just haven't crossed their path yet. But it is up to you to not be selfish and go and ask them the question. It's all about a timing. I was very skeptical and negative. I got approached by ACN in the past, but at that time, it was the wrong timing. I was full-time student. I was on loan and, and um, what's it called? Anyway, scholarships. I didn't need the money. And I had all the time that I wanted. So I was closed up. Two years later, different situation. It's a timing. So you never know when you're going to be in the right timing of the person. But you got to ask a question. And if it's a no, fantastic. Put a mark in your calendar, call them back in six months. If not, call them back in a year. If not, call them back in another six months. If not, and you never know when that timing is going to hit. Trust me, they will think about you and you'll be an SVP. All right. I'll see you later. Goodbye.